Oh, goody. All right, what's up, everybody? Zombies here again. And today we're back with another Mercenaries video. This one's going to be covering something a little bit different and isn't something I've looked at before. This is actually going to be taking a look at some information we had prior to the launch of Mercenaries. And I found this by going back and actually going through their kind of launch gameplay announcement video where they basically showed off Mercenaries for the first time. And in revisiting that, I found there was actually some interesting stuff that got changed pre-launch. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today and see, you know, how some of this stuff changed from pre-release to what we ended up getting at launch. Before we get into it, though, if you enjoy this type of content, do remember to like and subscribe. There's a ton to help out the channel and it keeps the Mercs videos coming. So let's dive right into it. Basically, one of the things that got changed in Mercenaries, uh, presumably towards when actual release happened, was they decided to swap around a lot of roles for some of the characters. You may have been able to see in the thumbnail of this video, uh, I got some screenshots of other characters I noticed throughout the video. A bunch of characters got changed from being casters, and these are kind of characters that you would kind of expect to be a caster given how their current abilities work. So like Ragnaros, Malfurion, I think Anaconda was in there. These are all characters that they definitely have abilities you would associate with casters, but it seems kind of relatively close to launch or just before launch, they were changed. And presumably this is for uh, balancing of three different groups, but it was definitely interesting to see nonetheless that some of these characters used to be a totally different type. And we do have um, a limited amount of information on this stuff. Here you can see we do have a screenshot of uh, Tyrion. Tyrion was actually red. And for his character and kind of even for what the abilities he has do, um, it kind of makes sense that Tyrion would be a red. I've talked about this a little bit with uh, Sign of Times before, and from like looking at it from a character lore perspective, like Tyrion should be a protector. It's it's honestly kind of weird that he's a fighter, and luckily for us, Tyrion is one of the few of these characters that actually got showcased his ability screen. A lot of the other characters that we've seen from different screenshots throughout that, and I think maybe one other pre-launch video, uh, they show these characters being in a different tribe, but we don't actually, or different uh, type, I guess, but we don't actually get to see what their abilities were, if their abilities were any different, if they were any better or worse or changed entirely, but... Luckily for us, Tyrion is actually one of the few characters where we did get a little glimpse at what he was like, and Tyrion actually changed quite a bit. So if you look at his abilities here, uh, Divine Assault, same thing as it's always been, just attack an enemy. However, we can see Overkill. That's, that's kind of interesting. I'm imagining this was in replacement of death blow because it kind of accomplishes the same thing um, i imagine i guess this wouldn't trigger uh presumably if it worked like overkill and constructed uh triggering this would require dealing more than exact damage so i could see them getting rid of that because it seems like a very weird requirement to have compared to death blow i think death blow is a lot simpler and you don't get punished for like dealing exact damage. I think that would have been a feel bad mechanic and I think it's much better that we ended up getting death blow instead, but interesting to see nonetheless. Then blessing of kings. This one changed quite a bit. Uh for one, it is plus 9 plus 9, so it actually was giving a little bit more uh stats there, but I think the bigger thing here is the fact that blessing of kings was a one cooldown ability. 
I think this would have been really, really strong. Blessing of Kings has been very good on Tyrion. The problem is, usually he, if you're leading with him, he, he usually dies before he can use it. And if he does end up living long enough, or if he comes off off the bench, you can only get it off once. Because two cooldown is a lot of time in Mercenaries PvP. So normally you're not going to get a two cooldown ability off twice. So kind of interesting. Uh, I don't think the extra stat would have really mattered too, too much, but the, the cooldown definitely would have made a difference. However, we can kind of see that it was not the only cooldown that was different pre-launch. Uh, we have Holy Shields here. So give this Merc and it adjacent characters divine shield so this ability got changed entirely uh before it looks like this is kind of more of a divine shield theme which kind of makes sense given what Tyrion kind of does and his character from like base hearthstone all about that divine shield taunt stuff so no taunt but divine shield is pretty powerful um this was too cool down though uh, so you would not be getting this off very often. However, it was a very powerful effect, giving both himself and Jason characters divine shield. So kind of interesting design space. Um, personally, I think it's better that we ended up getting the uh, later version of this skill where it only has one cooldown and it sets an enemy to one attack, especially in the current meta with Sylvanas running around like crazy, and even Trigor, uh, just being able to quickly shrink something has been really good. So this is one of those changes where I think it's probably better for the character. However, I think the Divine Shield thing would have been a bit more in line if he did end up staying a red character, because it is very kind of protector themed. Um, then looking at his equipment here, uh, one kind of interesting thing here is we can ex we can see they experimented a bit with whether they wanted to use numbers or Roman numerals. Like in, you can see most of them have, uh, you know, five or four next to them, but Ashbringer actually has IV, which obviously stands for four. But kind of interesting to see they were experimenting with that. Also worth noting that Ashbringer did seem to get a little bit of a nerf pre-launch. Um, it was bit more powerful instead of giving your party plus eight plus eight now it or back then it would give it plus 10 plus 10 which again not a super huge difference in stats but definitely would have been a little bit stronger so kind of interesting to see that there um and then Tyrion shield is the other big one that seemed to have a pretty big change here uh, used to make Holy Shield also give this Merc Divine Shield. Um, but th that seems kind of weird because it, you, we can see that... Oh, I guess it's because it's his equipped item. Okay, so this actually makes more sense now. So it looks like without the item, it would have just been give adjacent characters Divine Shield. With the item, it gives himself and the other characters Divine Shield. This one did end up getting replaced with his current equipment which gives him plus 10 HP and allows him to enter with Divine Shield. So I think that does end up being a bit more fitting of a uh, fighter role because he's kind of trying to protect himself rather than protect the team like a protector would. And then King's Helm doesn't seem to have gone through any other changes. But yeah, I thought this was really interesting. Um, I'm curious, you know, what things would have been like, especially in the, the early days of launch mercenaries, if a few of these other mercs that had changed uh, typings had launched in their kind of original form. Uh, some other ones we can see here. Again, we don't have any uh, detail on the, the skills and stuff and how that may have changed for a lot of them other than uh, Tyrion here. But... We can take a look and see uh, Uther was also a protector as well, um, which kind of makes sense given how he has that taunt ability and whatnot. And taunt seems to be a pretty protector heavy thing too. And then this was also true for Guff and Mutanus. Um, 
kind of wish they would revert Mutanus to being a red because he feels like a red, pretty much like all his abilities, I think, make sense as a red. We did get a thread a little while ago talking about like different tribes and how some tribes are more focused on certain units, but I think Mutanus really made a lot of sense as a red, and so I'm surprised they kind of changed him. Um, Guff was also an interesting one to see changed because Guff is a caster now, but he is one of the few casters that actually has a taunt ability. I'm sure most people, myself included, kind of forget about that because it's not usually what you're using Guff for, but he does have an ability to attack in and gain taunt and stuff, so he kind of makes sense as a protector, and in my opinion, he probably makes more sense as a protector than Malfurion does, uh, given like what he currently does. But I thought this was really interesting. I'm curious as to what everyone else thinks about it. Uh, are there characters that you think should be different roles than what they currently are? Are there some of the ones that I've shown here that you think would be better in uh, their old role? Or do you think it made sense to make a lot of the changes that we ended up seeing for launch? Definitely let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm going to go back through some more pre-launch mercenaries footage to see if I can find any other interesting information like this. I'd love if I could find another character ability sheet for one of these characters that ended up getting changed pretty significantly because I think it's pretty cool to see what things were looking like early on compared to how they were at launch and how they are now. But for now, this was all I was able to find. But thought it was super cool. Definitely let me know what you think about it in the comments below. But that is going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, do remember to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.